Hello all, welcome back to New Chapters. My name is Sarah, and if this is your first time joining me, I just want to say thank you for stopping by for this chapter of my life. I'm a hobby hopper, so if this isn't the content you usually watch me for, I hope you enjoy this hobby as well, and we'll stick around for today's video. Today, we're going to be doing another whip and chat. Whip, W-I-P, just stands for work in progress. Feel free to work on your own projects alongside me, or you can just treat this as a podcast and listen while I chat if you would prefer. Um, today I am working on my Enablers Outpost kit. This is the Winter Girl kit. Um, it's a Shutterstock image. I also have my Diamond Art Club pin here. I have the regular brass tip on this end, and then on this side I have the uh, metal what is it called? The steel, a single placer tip, I believe is what it's called on the Diamond Art Club website. I have some uh, micro-sized glue dots in the tip there, and then I have it secured with a clear hair tie. For my tray, I'm going to be using this Firefly uh, Diamond Art tray. I'm trying to get a better focus on here, but it is not wanting to focus today. There we go. Maybe. <laughs> my lighting is a little off. It's a little bit earlier in the day than I normally film, and so I'm dealing with some cloudy, dispersed light, and it is not going so well. This is their element tray. It does have multiple bases. I'm going to be using the regular base today, but it also has a single placing grid as well as a multi-placing grid. And then in case I need them, I do have off to the side my Dreamer Design tweezers. Um, these are just the standard tweezers that come in all of their kits. All right, so getting into today, um, hopefully you guys can't see all of the dust hanging out on my diamond painting here, um, but it has been a little while since I have filmed anything um, or worked on this diamond painting. So I was trying to kind of clear the dust off, but I'm not sure that I was incredibly successful <laughs> with that today. Um, I'm going to try to kind of do something that seems reasonable for me today, but while I'm getting this set up, how are you guys doing? What's been going on in your lives? Anything fun, interesting, exciting, maybe not so great things happening? Um, anything that you're willing to share about in the comments below, feel free to share. Um, I'd love to be able to offer any so sort of support I can kind of in a virtual way to you guys, um, just as you guys offer me support when I'm telling you about my day-to-day -day living and all of that. So I'd love to be able to return the favor back to you guys in any way that I can. Um, but yeah, it's, as I said, it's been a little while since I've worked on this diamond painting. It's been a little while since I've diamond painted at all. Um, and I mentioned all the dust and now I'm seeing dust in like all the old spots too that I've diamond painted and got some little fuzzy chunks. We'll have to see if I can uh, dig those out of my diamond painting later. <laughs> Alas, this is the problem with being someone who hops between hobbies and, you know, doesn't always clean up the workspace and is like, if I leave it out on the table, I'll work on it. And then I just leave it out on the table and it gets super dusty and I don't actually work on anything. <laughs> um, nothing really too... Uh, exciting or anything that's been keeping me from working on diamond painting or filming content or anything like that just kind of been a little down in the dumps I guess a little disheartened by everything that's been going on um in my like job hunt and things like that should find some colors here so I can actually diamond paint while we're talking as I said I apologize for the lighting it is probably a little bit off today um just because of the cloudy weather and I'm actually filming when it's light enough outside that my light can be impacted by that. It's not all just artificial light like it typically is. Um, but I wanted to make sure I got this done today. I made sure it was a priority on my list so I could have this ready and hopefully uploaded on time for you guys again. But um, biggest things that have been happening in terms of job stuff is I did end up getting an interview scheduled. Um, and then I had the interview for not my, you guys already knew I had my uh, job interview for my old agency that I used to work for. 
but then there is another agency that's the same position, just a different jurisdiction um, that had a probation officer job open that I applied to. And I um, got a call back from that one, finally got the interview scheduled. We ended up playing phone tag for a while. I believe I talked about that in my last whip and chat. But after we finally got a hold of each other, we had my interview scheduled um, and I did have that interview. I don't necessarily expect to hear back from them immediately. I thought it went okay. Um, I mean, I don't know that it was 100% like the most perfect interview ever. Um, and I guess I have some other things that I'm wanting to tie into some other talking points a little bit later on in the video. So I, um, some of the things that were kind of letting me down for that interview by the time I had it, I haven't told you guys about quite yet. I'll talk about it a little bit later in the video, but um, I was feeling a little like undecided about wanting that job by the time that I got to the interview, especially because I think I had mentioned to you guys in our playing phone tag, um, the like supervisor who would be my supervisor at that position if I did get it was kind of, I don't know how to describe it. It was like the priority for her was scheduling interviews. And I get that, that's fine. But like, I got a call on a Thursday afternoon and I missed the phone call. And by the time I called her back at like 4.30, I figured, well, maybe she was out of the office. So I decided not to leave a voicemail. But Thursdays are the days that my partner and I, we do like dinner together every week. Um, so I, you know, had made assumptions that I shouldn't have, that she was probably out of the office for the day and was done with her work day at 4.30 and I wasn't going to hear back from her. So I had turned off my ringer and was just having dinner with my partner um, and wasn't really paying attention to my phone at all. So apparently she had called me back right before five o'clock, but I didn't know she called me back until, you know, seven o'clock that night when I finally checked my phone again. <clears throat> and then... Um, I said, I hadn't left a voicemail, so I knew that she knew that I tried to call her back, and she was like, oh, I saw you tried calling me, and you, you know, don't leave me a voicemail or anything, but I'm just calling you back, trying to touch base with you, and I was like, well, okay, cool, but obviously we didn't touch base Thursday, and then Friday morning, she called, and because I'd been living, you know, my unemployed life and sleeping ridiculous hours, I wasn't up at like nine o'clock or whatever time she had called me that morning. So I ended up uh, like missing that phone call too. And she left a voicemail and said something along the lines of like, if, if I don't hear back from you by the end of the day, then I'm just going to assume that you're no longer interested in this position. And I was like, you literally called me less than 12 hours ago <laughs> for the first attempt at contact. And I'm like, okay, whatever. I was like, I was planning to call her back as soon as I woke up anyway. And so I did try calling her back when I woke up. Well, she didn't answer. So I left a voicemail and was like, yeah, I, I am interested in this position. Um, if you could give me a call back, I should be available anytime this afternoon to take a call. Um, so just if you'll call me back one more time, then we can go ahead and get this scheduled. Well, she didn't call me back. So like right before five o'clock on Friday, I called and was like, hey, I'm trying to call again. Um, I'm not sure if this means since we haven't made contact by the end of the day, if that means I'm, you know, no longer eligible for the position, but I am interested in scheduling an interview. So I didn't hear anything back from her Friday at all after I tried reaching out twice and left two voicemails. And really the only reason I didn't leave a voicemail on Thursday was because I had complete intentions of calling her back on Friday when I was available to try to schedule an interview. Um, if that's, I presume that's what the call was about on Thursday, but I didn't know at the time. So I was like, I'm not going to leave a voicemail if I'm just going to call her back tomorrow anyway. So didn't end up making any contact with her on Friday. And then of course, Monday, she tried calling me back first thing in the morning when I was not awake. So we ended up, basically, she left me a voicemail that was like, I'm just going to assume you're interested at this point And like, here's the date and time that we're scheduling you. If this doesn't work, give me a call back. It's like, okay, whatever. Um, and I did call her back and I just confirmed that that time did work, but it was like kind of a pain in the butt to get it all coordinated. And then I just, I felt like there was a lot of, I don't know, 
it felt like it was one of those you have to respond immediately to us as your employer and like you're not allowed to have a life outside of your job it was kind of the vibe I was getting from that whole situation so I was a little like I'm not sure I was a little leery at that point right like I was like I don't know that that's really the sort of environment that I would like to work in like I like a job where you know once my day is done my day is done like I'm not going to be available for you as my supervisor or my clients or anybody outside of my working hours um, because that's a boundary I have to have for my own mental health. Otherwise, I'd be that person who would absolutely take everybody's call all of the time. And that's just a bad precedent to have because once you start doing that, people expect that of you. And that's just, it's a line that I established early on in my career, like, I am not available 24 seven and I will never be available 24 seven. And if that's what you want for me, then this probably isn't a good fit. Um, so yeah, was a little leery about everything from the way that that already panned out anyway. Um, but as I said, I did have that interview again, it, it went fine. It wasn't bad. Um, I basically gave the exact same spiel that I gave to my old employer, um, about, you know, wanting to help people and be innovative and like, work towards helping people first and and doing that prioritizing safety as a secondary concern versus the like initial um, concern. Ugh, dang it, I always hate when I'm trying to close up a container and I don't realize it's not closed all the way on the side and then I still drills out the edge. But I don't know why this container is not closing anymore. There we go. I think I had one stuck in the track but I definitely dropped a handful of drills on the ground. We'll see if I can find those later. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I mean, the interview was fine. It wasn't like, I don't know, everyone was smiling and nodding and like seemed like they were happy with what I was saying and doing, but I don't know. Um, I think, you know, you probably don't get a lot of frowns and I know nope, we're not going with you sort of attitude when you're interviewing with somebody, but whatever. And then um, kind of because of that and because of some other things that have been going on, I'm still applying to other jobs because I'm trying not to put all of my eggs in one basket. I am really trying to um, be realistic about making sure I have lots of different things going at any given time because I am quickly running out of money that I have available to uh, keep living without employment. And again, that's already with you know my partner being awesome and taking on more financial responsibility than he typically would in our relationship. Normally we do things more 50 50, but right now he's taken on a big chunk of our like living expenses. And uh, because of that though, I applied to a agency that I've been applying to for a while now. Um, and every time I apply, I get absolutely no response from them, but I keep applying anyway. Cause I'm like, I wouldn't mind working for them if they ever <laughs> contacted me back. And I'm like, I personally, I guess not personally, but I professionally know like the owner, not the owner, the manager, like the, the lead supervisor person for this company because I worked with him at my job at the jail locally. So I'm like, I know that he would recognize my name if he's the one looking through things. So I, and I still don't know. It's one of those positions. It's like you, they require you to put your, uh, your like minimum pay requirement or whatever in your application. And I still kind of question that maybe I'm asking for something that's way more than they would ever be willing to pay, even though it's absolutely deserved for the role that I'm, I'm applying to. Not an easy role. Um, and especially as most of the ones I've been applying to have been like for swing shift or evening shift or overnight shift sorts of uh, timeframes. So I'm like, it definitely would make sense to me to be paying somebody, you know, $18, $20 an hour, something like that um, in our area. That seems like more than fair to request. But I think that's maybe why I haven't gotten any callbacks from them is that every time I'm applying, I'm putting something that's too high. But at the same time, like, that's kind of my minimum requirement for that position um, or really for any position in order to make ends meet on a regular basis. So. I'm not willing to downgrade my pay request um, just to get a call back from them. 
and it's something that like I think I'd be fine at but it's not something that necessarily like gets me super excited either so it's one of those I'd like the opportunity if they would give it to me but I don't think it would be something that would be a career sort of thing um, but I have been applying to local library jobs since since I started looking for jobs really and the library that's like most local to me there's a bigger branch um every time I apply they you know sometimes I'll be considered as a second round candidate but um I I haven't gotten any callbacks technically from that one or that library um, and I've applied to several positions with them now but I did apply to a different library on like about same distance just the other direction from me um and so we'll see how that goes I'm pretty open and excited about that position as well um it's like a it's like a programming kind of specialist position I think is what they called it um but it's something that they like in the pro like in the description that's what I'm trying to say in the job description they didn't list anything for experience more than like having a customer service background or having experience with customer service roles and being able to uh, cooperate in like a team environment um, and work independently. So like those were the only requirements they had, like there weren't other education requirements or like experience requirements or anything. So I was like, I don't have to have a degree in library sciences to be eligible for this role, which is awesome because I don't have that. And so I think that's part of why I haven't been getting callbacks or been top candidate for some of the positions I've been applying, been applying to at the other library um, is because they do have that as like a job minimum requirement or a preferred requirement for most of the other positions. So I'm hopeful that this one having less requirements um, from like an education standpoint and library specific stuff that maybe I'll be eligible for this one and might get a call back. So I'm hopeful about it. Honestly, I'm more excited about that job than any of the other jobs that I've applied to recently. Um, besides the update I have about the job that I interviewed for last week um, that I told you guys about, and that was with my previous employer. Um, and I heard back from them. They, I still think I was the only person that they interviewed, so they really were putting all their, their eggs in my basket too. Um, but I heard back from them. They had asked if I could provide like a release of information for my last job just so they could confirm my employment and whatever. And so I missed an email about that. I think I told you guys about that last week and I had missed that email. And so I emailed them back on Friday and was like, oh my gosh, I'm just seeing this, but yes, absolutely. I'll sign whatever paperwork you need. Well, then on Monday, I heard back from them and they were like, actually, we no longer need you to do this because we decided we're moving in a different direction. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I was like, I don't know exactly what that means. So, I mean, I, re I it's my old supervisor. So I felt like I could ask and I was like, can you explain to me, like, was it a specific thing that you guys weren't on board with? Or was it like a lot of little things that you felt like wouldn't jive or what was the deciding factor and he just had emailed me back and said um that they were afraid that I would be uh gosh I wish I could remember the exact wording because I keep coming back he used the word inconsistent <laughs> but like there's so much more context to it that like I think that they were concerned that I would be trying to take things too far out of the realm of what they're currently doing. Like with me wanting to be innovative and be helpful to people instead of punitive towards people and all of that kind of stuff. I think they were afraid that I would be pushing things in a much more progressive sphere than what they are currently capable or willing, or maybe even truthfully wanting to get to. Um, that they they felt like I couldn't be consistent with the expectations of the role is I think how it was worded. And so that job is not going to work out, unfortunately. And I was honestly, I was kind of like, well, I mean, if that's what you felt, then yes, that's absolutely correct, because I do intend to shake things up and 
be more progressive and more lenient and like work at this from like a social work angle versus like a corrections angle um, if I were to be a probation officer again. So that I had found out about on Monday and then I had my interview for the other probation office Wednesday. So I definitely was a little jaded about that because I was like, look, I'm not going to be a different person than this. So if this isn't what this agency wants either, then I guess this isn't the job for me anymore. This isn't the role for me. So that's another part of the reason that I'm hopeful about this library position, because I think I can provide people with resources and provide people with support and like be human towards other humans <laughs> at like the library in a like localized resource gathering sort of capacity um, that maybe I can't be as a probation officer, at least not where I'm currently living. Um, so I'm a little sad and disappointed and I feel a little disappointed in the agency too for not wanting to pursue that sort of future. Though ironically, like I'm pretty sure that was the last I knew I should say that was exactly the direction that the agency was trying to move. So it kind of bugs me that they seem to be going backwards a little bit. And again, perhaps operating in a, like humane is not quite the right word, but it is kind of the right word. Like, I don't know. There's a difference between trying to help people change themselves and like create long-term behavior change and forcing someone to do something for the short term just because that's what the court has told them to do without actually addressing any of the underlying barriers or concerns or learned situations. And like, I'm not wanting to do anything that's crazy out there in terms of being like innovative and like trying new things. I just want to implement the tools that the state wants us to be implementing <laughs> that nobody in that office is implementing. So I could go on a whole tangent. I probably already have. You guys are probably tired of hearing me talk about criminal justice <laughs> things and issues and like me trying to, I don't know, be a better person towards other people. I don't, ugh, it all concerns me. It all bothers me. Um, but apparently I'm not going to get the opportunity to try to be a positive factor for other people. Um, in their probation experience, at least not at my old agency. And truthfully, because of the way they responded, I'm not sure that the other agency that I will hopefully be hearing back from soon, I'm not sure that they're going to feel any differently about my whole pitch. So we'll see how it goes, but I'm not super hopeful about it at this point, honestly. And even though I just said I was going to get off my criminal justice soapbox, I'm going to stay on it for just a tiny bit longer because... <laughs> Um, I've been reading a lot recently that's been with my downtime. That's been like one of the things I've been choosing to fill my time with. Um, again, I haven't really been diamond painting super much the last couple of weeks, but I have been reading quite a bit. And one of the books that I just finished reading is called Chang Gang All Stars. Um, it was such a good book and such a like frustratingly like makes me mad book. <laughs> It's it's like it's considered sci-fi, um, but it's kind of like a dystopian future that unfortunately seems like it could be very realistic, where basically people who have been convicted of some of the most heinous crimes in our society in the US, um they have this option of, you know, being in not only prison like modern day prison but in prisons where like humanity kind of doesn't exist anymore like some of them you know like they are on 24 7 uh like silence like you're not allowed to talk to anybody and they have like a dystopian element that keeps people from being able to speak as part of the um like development of correctional things in the book um there's like a tool that will prevent people like physically prevent people from speaking um, and then, like, some of the other things they talk about are, like, um, like, oh, what's it called? Sort of, like, dog fighting, except with prisoners. Um, so, like, you have that option where you can stay in prison and endure those sorts of things. Or you can sign up for this program um, that they've created that's basically 
kind of like a gladiator fight. Like you can go on this whole three year long venture. And if you survive all of your gladiator fights, because you fight till the death, um, then you can be released from custody with, I think they like expunge your like charges after that. Um, if I remember right, but it's like, basically, you know, you don't have charges anymore on your history if you survived and provide, basically it's like providing entertainment for your freedom. And it was such a good book, but such a like, as I said, anchor inducing book, especially with everything that I'm dealing with personally right now and like trying to advocate for a more humane criminal justice system in my small part where I can. Um, in my own like personal and professional life. And so it was, it was a really good book. If you have any interest in like prisons, crime, anything like that. Um, and you know, I know there's different people, like people have different opinions about things and whatever. So there's definitely some people who would read that book and probably think, oh my gosh, like this is the best idea ever. Like we should totally move towards a system that's like this. Because unfortunately, there are people out there who will feel that way. I know that. Um, but that is certainly not the way that I feel. It's definitely one of those, like, it's so anger-inducing because of how how close it feels like we already are to that sort of a system. And, like, the horror of putting people through that. Um, and I understand there's some uh, commentary in it about, like, victims in crimes like this. And it is a hard, like, line to parse, right? Like, you don't want victims to feel like the people who have hurt them or their family members are just, quote, unquote, like, roaming around freely or whatever. Um, you want there to be some sort of justice, whatever that might look like. But at the same time, it's like, we're only as good as the way we treat our worst, right? Like, if we're willing to put people into these situations of torture <laughs> or give them no better choices or alternatives besides death, like, how good are we then at the end of the day, you know, as like a society? And I don't know, it was very interesting. As I said, it was very good. I really enjoyed it. I know it was a big talk of like, there was big expectation for it and hype about it before it came out last year. And if you, as I said, are at all interested in like, criminal justice stuff or prisons or anything like that, I think that you would really, even like social activism and stuff, I think you really enjoy reading it. Again, maybe not so much in a, like, giving you the positive response sort of a way, but I think you would appreciate the conversation that the book provides um, and kind of allows people to have. I'm trying to find somebody in my life that I think would read it and appreciate it the same way that I do because gosh I just want to talk to people about <laughs> this book and uh, I don't really have anyone in my life that I can do that with because I don't know anybody who's read this book um, and the people I know who read pretty consistently it's either something that's not up their alley or like they wouldn't really care to have an in-depth conversation with me about it or uh, like my friend that I used to work with she like attempts to read like once a year <laughs> But she never finishes any books and so i'm like i don't know that she would actually get quite into it enough to finish it and be able to talk to me about it i will say the ending is a little like i got to the end and i read it and i was like oh what's happening in the next chapter <laughs> and i was like oh my gosh no that was the last page that's the end and i was like i didn't feel like it had a very satisfying ending necessarily i mean like it's implied that you know what's happening and like kind of what the future holds but like I just I wanted more <laughs> and I just was very very disheartened when I flipped the page and it was acknowledgments and not another chapter and I was like no so I don't know so I was a little annoyed at the ending but not because it was like a bad book or a bad ending just because I wanted there to be more story I wanted to know I wanted to know if things changed you know <laughs> And I didn't get that told to me in writing. I just have to imply what I think happened at the end, um, which is fine. It just, as I said, was a book that really induced some pretty annoyed emotions out of me. And I was like, man, this is exactly kind of how I feel right now. 
trying to make changes in this system in the real world present day and I'm kind of getting met with people who don't see people as people <laughs> if that makes any sense but yeah as I said I need to get off my soapbox I have to stop discussing it it's fine <laughs> I can't do anything about it right now anyway um so that's kind of what's been happening this week and then we went to my partner's niece's graduation this past weekend um it was really good I finally I've like interacted via zoom and like facetime calls with his sister before but I haven't ever met her in person so I finally got to meet his sister and I don't know it was just good it was fun um I really enjoy hanging out with his family I don't love hanging out with my family very much <laughs> um and so it's kind of become a running joke between the two of us at least that you know I'd much rather hang out with his family than my family I like my immediate family but my extended family when we get together for events like graduations and holidays and stuff like it's always just chaos and you're not allowed to not be a part of the chaos like they kind of force you into it and that's always the part that I'm like I don't want to do this and you're forcing me to do something against my will that I don't want to be a part of but you know alas I have no choice in this matter as where his family is like there's chaos but like you get to choose to be a part of it and if you don't want to be a part of it we're not going to force you to be a part of it so I definitely uh appreciate that element of his family much more than the way my family operates but I definitely had fun um if I had known that we were gonna or if I had known his sister was coming in on Friday we would have maybe tried to go down Friday instead of Saturday um because Saturday after the grad party, we all kind of just went our separate ways and then we didn't see each other again until graduation. And then I had to zip him off to the airport because he was gone for a work training. Um, so we didn't get to stay and hang out with anybody after graduation. And so I uh, wish we had gone down Friday because that was the night that everybody, like they all went out to dinner and they hung out at his brother's house. And I don't know, just had, had more of the like family fun like low pressure nobody's running around trying to you know be a host and hostess <laughs> kind of a uh, night on friday and we missed out on that and i was kind of like well darn if i had known we probably could have tried to come out on friday instead but we didn't know so we missed out on it but that's okay but the rest of the weekend was fun and then we managed to make it to the airport. As I said, my partner was at a work training all week last week, or <laughs> last week, wow. This week he's at a work training all week. And uh, so I'm kind of looking forward to being home alone for a little bit. And I don't know if anybody else understands, but like I definitely feel more productive when I'm home alone. Like there's just some sort of mental barrier that keeps me from being able to do things when like, my partner is home and I've been that way with multiple partners like this isn't exclusive to this particular relationship so I know it's something that's an issue that I have versus something in this particular relationship um but I am definitely hoping to be much more productive this week than I feel like I have been for the last couple of weeks and can kind of get some stuff done around our apartment our apartment wow man get some stuff done around our house <laughs> while he's gone. Um, I think I just feel like I have a little more freedom to like do what I want when I want. And not that I can't do stuff while he's home. Like it's not like he's preventing me, but like there's something in my brain that prevents me from being able to just, you know, do the dishes and clean things and like do those, heck, even like film and stuff. Um, I feel more comfortable doing that when I'm just home alone by myself and I don't have to feel like I got to worry about whether I'm disrupting other people's plans or intentions or whatever. But um, yeah, I think that's probably it for today. Um, I'm not quite done with this color yet, so I'll go ahead and wrap it up after I get off camera here. Um, but if you guys made it to the end of this video, if you'll leave an emoji that's related to something about like interviews or professional um, things, you know, I know there's like a briefcase and like a suit and tie or something. If you'll leave an emoji with that um, in the comments below, just showing that you made it to the end of this video, I would greatly appreciate it. 
And thank you all for watching today's video. If you're looking for more content related to this chapter of my life, please check out my diamond painting playlists. Um, they're going to be linked in the cards, and if they're not popping up, it'll be around the description box. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more content about this chapter and others. Please leave any comments or questions you have down below. See ya in the next one. Bye.